good evening my query is when a tenant doesn't uh, vacate after the period of uh, you know tenancy contract so which is the competent court you know one has to file i mean are, do we have options or it's just uh, you know uh, uh, one particular court like uh, options in my way of rera court or civil court well if he's not paying the money during the period of uh, tenancy so in both ways which is the competent court sir that's my query fair enough now may, maybe some couple of other people can also ask the questions i uh, i'll know the drift maybe a couple of other questions yes. you wanted me to ask more questions or you wanted others to ask other you, you can also ask more questions i just okay. want to know what we will be you know what people will be asking and what they really want to know yeah take the discussion along those lines right and one is the about the arbitration clause uh, do we uh, you know do does arbitration also come into rental agreements or you know the online arbitration principle and the third query again is all related to disputes only uh, how does the consumer uh, court uh, come into picture in in terms of you know uh, rental agreements if at all are you an advocate i'm a lawyer sir I don't practice, but I'm a law student, and I'm doing LLM. So, well, anybody else wants to wants to ask? Yes, sir. My query is that uh, suppose the tenant wants to sell the premises as in trans by transfer of tenancy, then what should be the ideal value? Because the landlord is always looking at uh, uh, you know getting a higher period, sorry, a higher amount. So, is there some uh, you know what is the usual practice? Mechanism for valuation. That's what you want. Yes. And now, anybody else with? Uh, do you have any other questions? Hi, sir. Just sure. I wanted to know how can an illegal tenant, uh, you know, question the title of a landlord? Basically, a tenant who has uh, who is an obstructionist and has, you know, uh, illegally purchased the tenancy from the original tenant. And I, I'll answer this one very quickly. Quickly, uh, a tenant has no right to question the ownership of the landlord. Uh, just, that's just one, one now, and something more. And, and ask ask me a few more questions so that I I, I get the general drift. And I expected that this would be the questions, but I just wanted to make sure. Anybody? Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, I'm Kupa. I want to ask uh, that how, as a landlord how much security deposit is need to be refundable okay okay after completion of agreement uh i think we we i've, I've got the general drift and we we'll start we we'll start with we we'll start uh now how many of you uh is anybody at least 70 years old anybody 50 years old anybody in the audience oh, not even 50 40 years there will be a few there'll be a few right, sir. i i'm going back into the history because uh, I don't think any of the law students or even the lawyers ever write the, ever read the instructions to uh, to a, to an act. They go directly to the sections, and uh, that that's about it. Maybe up, up, open up the uh, Bear Act and read only the section which is involved. The first thing that you must understand is. The Rent Act is a piece of beneficial legislation. I, I'll have to go back into the history because you will be able to get a lot of a lot of answers to the questions that you have asked. The Rent Acts are a piece of beneficial legislation. Now, people might think that a Rent Act is something unique to India. It is not. Even in Western countries, even in New York, there are Rent Acts. They might be different. They might be based on different, uh, different concepts, different historical concepts. But in India, and we might as well stick to the Maharashtra Rent Act because most of them are the same. Um, during the war, that means the Second World War, 1939 to 45, uh, it had affected this country also. And as a child, I remember there were a lot of wards to let, to be let. And uh, parents being sticklers for English always used to joke about to be let. Say, if you're going to let it now, say right let. To be let, would you would be letting it out in the future. But there were a lot of these wards. That means that flats were lying vacant. People had run away from Bombay because of the war, thinking it will be bombed, people will die. Bombay had become a little bit barren. And a lot of lot of flats were lying vacant. In fact, we, my parents went to a flat like that. Right mm -hmm. where I'm sitting is a flat that the family has been occupying since 1922. That's 102 years now. Uh, but in 1941, my parents also moved. 42, they moved into a flat because they were available. The war got over and suddenly there was an influx into Bombay. At that time, Bombay was a big state, including Gujarat. It was Bombay. 
the Bombay state, not Maharashtra and Gujarat. A lot of people came into Bombay city and one by one, the flats got filled up. And soon there was a shortage because remember during the war, nobody built buildings because they would lie fallow. Now, all of a sudden, there is a demand for buildings. A lot of people coming in. The landlords started exorbitant rents. To clamp down on that, the rent tax were introduced. They froze the rents on a certain date that you cannot increase your rent beyond this particular, whatever you have been charging on such and such a day. Now, a lot of tenants would have rejoiced saying that we are now safe where we are. Along with the amount of rent, they brought in other legislation too, which prevented uh, the landlords from throwing people out. But it's a matter of economics. Fewer flats, first of all, a lot of flats, fewer people. Now you have fewer flats and a lot of people. So naturally, demand and supply, the price it would start to vary. Uh, the landlords were naturally wanted to throw people out because the new tenants would be able, they'll be able to cash in on quite a bit. But the whole thing became perverse because there was a shortage. Black money started to change hands. People who were staying in the rented flats, if they moved out, they demanded money. If a landlord found a flat which was free, he would demand a lot of money for the new tenant because remember, he could only charge what was allowed. So what was called the pagri, it actually became a black market. And by the 80s, uh, somebody had calculated that 70,000 crores had changed hands during this period. The landlords were not... The landlords were not at a loss because they were making a lot of money out of Pagri. Otherwise, they would have handed over the buildings to the tenants and said, okay, give me a recent amount and uh, run the building yourself. Nobody wants to work at a loss. But they were also making a lot of money. A lot of people had a lot of black money which they would invest into a flat. And uh, things just moved on. As I said, it had become perverse. And uh, in 1999, the rent tax was amended. The rents, they allowed the rents to be increased by 4% a year. But till today, I have not been able to... This is one of the questions somebody has asked. I have not been able to figure out whether it was 4% simple interest every year or 4% compounded. I think it must be simple interest. Otherwise, compounding, it would make it extremely... Uh, it, the rents would be extremely high. So right now, we have a rent act in place where the rents are increased uh, 4% every year. But in 99, there was a change. Originally, people could stay in a rented place no matter to whom the building belonged. Now, there were a lot of buildings which were owned by the government or semi-government organizations, trusts like the LIC and all that. The new legislation took all that out of the Rent Act, which in effect meant that the tenants over there could be thrown out. There was a separate piece of legislation um, pertaining to these properties and a lot of tenants were thrown out. A lot of tenants, they, they went to court, the rents were increased, I think eight percent, eight times for the tenant and 80 times for a commercial property, something like that. But they have come to some sort of a understanding. It's still going on, but it's not as bad as it was immediately after the change. Another change was that since, as I said, it's a piece of uh, legislative, uh, beneficial legislation, any company that was a tenant and which had enjoyed the low rents, if the company had a paid up capital of more than one crore, those companies could not benefit from the rent act. There's a lot of litigation on that. It was for the tenants, it was a losing litigation because one day they would have to be, have to leave, but they kept on extending it by a few years here and there. So, Partially, the rents were controlled. The people who could afford it or the authorities felt could afford it had to leave. They had no longer protection. Now, once you see, before you start asking any questions or even thinking of them, please understand what I said. Beneficial legislation, it cannot and should not be misused. This is how the Rent Act works. Now, people will, when there's money, people will misuse it. And that is why you have a lot of litigation. Either the landlords want to throw people out of the slightest. There are so many ways in which they can throw them out officially. One is non-occupation. Second is subletting. The third is um, change of user. There are so many ways. Bona fide possession. Uh, please remind me about bona fide possession also. I will speak to you about that. It, you know, normally, 
uh, lawyers don't really uh, pay attention to that. So now when you realize what the legislation is, we shall start asking questions. Remember that it is going to be a fight between landlord and tenant forever. Now shall we start? Okay, question. The gentleman who had asked me the first question, let him start with it. Right. So I was asking about uh, in case of a dispute between landlord and tenant, and let's say the tenant uh, the tenant uh, uh, exceeds the 11 month contract or 11 month period he doesn't pay or whilst he is in the still in the tenancy period he is not paying so which is the competent court was my first question the first question is all all rent tag matters it i'm talking of bombay all rent tag matters are handled by the small causes court either bandra or the bitala these have been designated for rent tag matters now, people have stopped giving places on rent. Uh, if you will look at the new rent act, you will find that any new tenant that the landlord brings in, there has to be a registered agreement. It has to be recorded, so given to the police, etc., etc. Some sort of record has to be prepared. Any new tenant. Normally now, what people do is they do not go in for rent, but they go in for license in a form of a leave and license agreement. Now, leave and license agreement is also a section in the rent act, but it is a different court, which is specific to disputes in leave and licenses. Uh, since you asked me what would happen, forget the rent. If you do not, suppose your rent, your license is a thousand rupees a month and it, it lasts for say 35 months. First of all, you have to get it registered, in which case the sub-register of assurances, you have to go there. Uh, you have to pay a certain amount depending upon your license fee or what is the period. And then after, after the period is over, if the licensee does not leave the premises, you have to go to this part of the special court. This, this, this is a small court which only handles license matters. It is right now in the Mada building at Bandra. There immediately, immediately, the licensee is made to pay twice the amount. Until the matter it is settled. And uh, the dispute normally does not take long in these cases, maybe six months or a year. So don't think of it rent. Now suppose you have entered a building on rent and you have a period for that. In that case, you will have to go to the small causes court. I will give you right now where I am sitting. I was born here. Yet my landlord in 1984 decided that I was an unauthorized tenant. It was a 22-year fight. The landlord came once and didn't turn up for 22 years. But they went to city civil court saying that I was not a tenant. I was an unauthorized. So if you, it depends on how the relationship is looked at. If it's tenant, landlord, small causes court, anything else, any other court of competent jurisdiction. So you might have it at the city civil court, you might have it at the small causes court, you might have at the other court which handles leave and licenses. Uh, have I answered your question, sir? Sir, yeah, in, extend, in extension to the same question, so this uh, also uh, uh, is uh, valid for a uh, shop act, uh, sorry, sh uh, agreement in commercial also, right? Where you have a leave and license. Yeah, it's almost the same. No, commercial, there's one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, suppose you have given the place for selling say, stationery. Right. And you convert it into a restaurant. The landlord has a right to... Again, pardon me, sir? If suppose, if suppose you are the landlord and you give me the shop, my small shop where I want to start a stationery, I do me on rent for stationery. But a couple of months later, I decide I don't, there's more money in say, serving Bilpuri or Panpuri or make a restaurant out of it, a couple. Mm -hmm. So I change the use. That is not allowed. Well, it's uh, because if I change my shop act, uh, but the company name is the same, the firm name is the same. See, sir, when you when you talk like this, like if I want to scratch this year, I will scratch it like this. Under law, that is not allowed. Uh, don't try to bypass it with some smart ideas. That all. When we have the agreement, it is between the landlord and the name of the firm, isn't it? If now here again, what? Yes. This this that's an it's a nice nice thing that you brought up. What used to happen? I am a tenant. I am in partnership with my brother or whatever it is. There are two of us. Now the landlord does not allow me to sell the property. He says, if you want to go, you go. I'll get in a new person. Now I want the money and I want to leave both. So what do I do? I make somebody else a partner in my firm and then resign. As I said, scratching the right ear with your left hand. You are trying to the purpose of the law. The natural court will not stand by you. They will stand by, they will decide for the landlord. You have tried to trick 
the landlord. Right. Naturally, I mean, it, it's it's ethically wrong, so why do it? So whether it's even even a tenant, suppose he brings in somebody else as a subtenant, hmm. self can lose the tenant. But if he wants to bring in as a subtenant and he has the permission of the landlord, is okay. Okay. Answer? Yes, sir. Very much so. Thank you. Tell me what else. Okay, let's come up with the let's come up with with, with more questions. Did <laughs> I ask that question now. We can come, uh, we can, we can uh, discuss our question in detail. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, my, my name is Pavan, advocate Pavan Tiku. Sir, I wanted to ask you a question regarding a tenancy uh, case that is going on, wherein a tenant uh, obviously is in the small project spot and the building is now. Uh, maybe going for a redevelopment. So, uh, what is the status of the landlord and the tenant in such a case uh, when the redevelopment of the building is in the due in the process? I mean, it's going to happen. So, how does this go through, sir? Will he will he get the rent back, or what will happen, sir? Can you ask him to leave, or what? The landlord is the building. In fact, the very place that I'm sitting right now mm -hmm. is the same type of problem. Exactly the. Same. Okay, okay. And the building is 115 years old yes, sir. where I'm sitting here. Okay, it belongs to a trust. Right. The tenants, 19 tenants, want to redevelop it. Right. The trustees are blocking it. Oh, I see, sir. Uh, normally, it is the other way around. It is the other way. In our case, it is the other way around, sir, because in our case, it's a society. So okay. the landlord is a member of the society. So now I was wondering how. How will it pan out, sir? What is going to happen? Just one minute. Just one minute. I mistook your question because I did not realize that it was already a society. Yes, sir. It's just right. It's a cooperative society. How can there be a landlord? Sir, what has happened is that he 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 joined as a D1 license uh, on a D1 license basis. But over the years, uh, he did not vacate and no action was taken. So when an original case was filed in the small causes court, at that time, the landlord accepted him as a tenant. Are you talking of just one person or are you talking of many? One person, just one person. The one person enters the building as a licensee, Correct. does not leave when the license is over. Who Correct. gave the license, by the way? The landlord gave him the license initially. But you said it was a society, so how can yeah, you... The society, like people come into the society to stay, so he came, a uh, leave and license agreement was made for okay. him to come and stay. Sir, please, please, please. I am getting confused. Right. Mr. Malcolm, a flat was uh, leased, correct, Mr. Uh, Pawan? It, it was actually a leave and license, it's not leased. It was a leave and license. Okay, sorry. Just one, just one minute. There is a building. Correct, sir. When was the building built? This is 1969, sir. 1969, so it must have been a cooperative society to begin with. Yes, it was a cooperative society. It is not a landlord dispute. No, sir. It is not a landlord dispute. It's a cooperative society. Correct. This does not fall under what we are discussing today because there is no landlord-tenant relationship. This is totally a different... Okay, okay. I understand what you mean, sir. Let's keep this aside. If you want, we'll discuss this later. Later on. Okay, no problem, sir. I understand your point. I understand your point. Thank you, sir. Somebody else. Tell me who... The other lady who had asked the question, put her on, please. Sir, regarding the valuation... Uh, because I know of somebody where the landlord is uh, trying to ar arm twist the tenant, you know, mm -hmm. when he wants to transfer the tenancy with the consent of the landlord. No, may, may I know your name, Miss? Pardon? May, may I know your name? I'm Arti. Uh, Miss Arti, first of all, over a period of time, and that I should have mentioned earlier, over a period of time, the tenants have realized the worth of the flats that they are staying in. And over a period of time, they have come to think that they own it. It might be their home, but it is not their house. Where I'm staying, it's my home, but I'm a tenant. It is not my house. The house belongs to the landlord. Now, as I said, over a period of time, tenants have realized that it's worth quite a bit. And why should... Now, tell me one thing. You have taken the benefit of this legislation for six, 70, 70, now 70 years. True. 75 years, 78 to be exact. Now you've taken benefit of this legislation. If you want to leave, why don't you just leave? Yeah, the tenant wants the marketable value also. Hey, what is the marketable value? Is the tenant an owner? Just, no. But just because he has a nuisance value, the tenant wants money. True. True. If he works with the landlord and the, the normal, I'll tell you what the normal thing is. Suppose a flat is sold for 100 rupees. 
the normal thing is that 66% is taken by the tenant and 33% is taken by the landlord. Right. This is a private arrangement. How legal it is or not also I cannot tell you, but it's a private arrangement. You cannot put a you cannot put a, a, a formula to this. Some oh. is 50-50, some 60-40. Go, go. It can, it's, it's a private discussion as to how much one person is in need and how much the other person is willing to let go. So you cannot put a formula to that. But to think that a tenant has a right to it, no, he doesn't have a right. Of course, nowadays, after legislation in 99, you are your duty has now been made official in the sense that you give it by check and it is expected that the day you leave, you get that money back. But whether hmm. you leave, the landlord wants to give the money back to you or not is a different thing. If suppose he says, I've spent the money, I don't have it now. Right. There's so that. one more question. If, and the tenant, I mean, the tenant is outgoing, but it is being sold on ownership basis to someone. No, that you can't do. How he doesn't own it. No, no. With the, the landlord is eventually the incoming buyer or he can't be the incoming tenant, but then it is being, so the tenant is releasing all his rights and then it is being sold on ownership basis. Then it, how would it work? It will not work because the tenant is not the owner. He has no right. What, yes, I... What right does a tenant have? The right tenant has a right only to stay there and pay fees, uh, pay the tenancy uh, rent as per law. Beyond that, he has no right. He has no not he does not even have a right for structural changes. At the most, he can paint his flat, tile it, maybe do a little bit of plumbing here and there, but otherwise, he has no right. Okay. There, there is uh, see. This is what I'm trying to tell you that over a period of time, tenants have actually or that they own it. Things have worked in such a way that you 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 can arm twist your landlord. But you don't you you can't do, do it as a matter of right. Where, where is the agreement? Who says that you own it? You have come in here as a tenant. If you have come in here as a tenant before the rent tag, there is no agreement. There is no piece of paper. Only thing is you show three months rent receipt and say, I'm a tenant. That's about all. So, over, as I said, people have started thinking wrongly. There are people who live in tenanted premises. See, what was the legislation originally for? So that people would not, poor people or even people of modest means, would not be held to ransom by the landlord. Now, there are so many cases and in seminars, I have asked them to keep quiet because if the landlord knows about it, they will be in deep trouble. Um, people who stay in tenanted premises may be paying hundreds, maybe one room, two rooms, small room somewhere in a chalk, maybe paying 200, 500 rupees a month rent. They buy flats yeah. in the cooperative society, costing lakhs of rupees. They give those flats out on license, make maybe 10,000, 25,000 for 50,000 on the flat and yet can occupy this place at 500 rupees. Do you think it is, think it is fair? No. As a uh, owner of the property, no. If I was a landlord, I would say no. It's not fair. But now remember that if the landlord comes to know that you're owning another property in, in the city, not right. I mean, you might own a, a, a flat somewhere in Panchgani or something like that. It's a different thing. But if you own a flat in Bombay or the city where you live in and where you are staying in a rented premises, the landlord has every right to evict you. You have a place of your own, get out. Don't take advantage of the rent tax. So it all depends on whether you're speaking as a tenant or you're speaking as a landlord. Okay? Yes. Thank you. God bless you. Hello. What time? Come, come up with some. Please, please. Hello. Yes. Yeah, good evening, sir. I asked you earlier the same question. How much uh, security deposit is refundable after the completion of agreement? Why I ask you, sir? Because I uh, noticed that certain amount of uh, certain things of my house is destroyed. So I understand afterwards means the whole thing is destroyed in kitchen. Right. After I, completion of agreement, I, uh, I I come to know about this. Uh, speak a bit slowly and uh, a little bit away from the mic. I really okay. Now you can hear me, sir? Slowly. Don't, don't shout. Uh, a little bit softer. And okay. Then... I'm sorry for that. Uh, how much amount of security deposit is refundable after completion of agreement? What is the agreement? Do they, will they return you the whole security amount? Now, now, if the security amount is for, say, three months rent, 
I'm sure any landlord will give it back to you because he's going to get a lot more. But if you give a pagri of lakhs of rupees, because if you are staying in a place where the rent is say just 200 rupees, it's a big flat and you are given lakhs of rupees, maybe crores of rupees. They take crores of rupees. As, now, when you want to leave, suppose the landlord says that I don't have the money, what will you do? Where will you take him? Which, which court will you take? I know of Parsi Trust where they take a deposit, which is used for some other work or something. And then when the licensee wants to leave, they say, you get somebody and take away the deposit. We don't know anybody. What do you do? I mean, you can't can't take something from somebody if he doesn't have it. So you are, in effect, risking it. There might be some other ways where he might give you some sort of guarantee, some, some I mean, money held in escrow maybe, which he doesn't trust and only takes the only takes the interest out of it. Now, as I told you, we personally know, and again in a Parsi colony, three crores and four crores of rupees are given as a deposit, where the flat rent might be just 500 or 700 rupees, maybe a thousand. Now, on three crores of rupees, you are losing minimum three lakhs per month. So, technically, your rent becomes three lakhs 500 rupees. Do you understand? Yes. That is what you are actually paying. Now, when you want to leave, you want that three crores of rupees back. Mm -hmm. But the landlord has used it up for some other things. He doesn't. Mm -hmm. He will say, continue until I make the money. Then I will give it to you. Where will you go? What what right do you have over, over the money that you're given him? Mm -hmm. And even if there is something, some agreement, he doesn't have the money. What will you do? He will say, okay, take my flat, which may not be worth that much. My, my question is, if these sort of loose agreements... And the problem is people rush into it. This is how people talk. I used to do a lot of Vasu Sastra work. Every time broker ne bola sham tak mein reply dao. Neto bech dega. Broker ne bola. See, and because of a shortage, people are dying to get into a flat. Unless you have your papers clear, your title clear, please don't do it. And there's another thing. People want to save money. My wife is 90% into title new divisions. People will buy properties worth maybe 100 crores, 500 crores, but will not spend even a lakh of rupees or not even 50,000 rupees to get the titles, uh, titles verified. And then there is problems. They want to buy it. People want to buy it quickly. They don't want to wait. So before you enter into an agreement with a landlord, please be sure that document is vetted by a very good lawyer and make sure that when you want to leave, you get your money back. Otherwise, where are you going to go? Best put the money in escrow. Tell him that you can take the interest out of it. The day I leave, I take my money back. Yes. That would be the ideal situation. So he gets a three lakhs. He gets three lakhs of rupees every month on interest. I'm taking it at 12% interest per month. He gets mm -hmm. the rupees and his 500 rupee rent. And oh, Mr. Malcolm, uh, but in her case, she is the landlord and the tenant damaged the property. In the kitchen, she found that lot many things were damaged in the kitchen. And now uh, she's asking how much security deposit should be refunded. The, let, let the lady tell me how long has the how long has the tenant been whatever it is whomever you call it how long has that person been there for three years how many years three, three years. years three years now when they were changing things in the kitchen or whatever it is you stop them because I am not aware whether they are changing or not you are the landlady are you right sorry you are the landlady are you am I correct yeah yeah is it not your duty to take care of your property is it not your duty to give notice to your tenant that once a month or once in six months, I will come and inspect the flat. Did you? No. No. Now, why do you want to hold the tenant responsible when you yourself did not look after the property? It's your property. It's your duty to look after it. I mean, when they put up uh, uh, change tilings or uh, break down walls or something, there's going to be a sound. There's going to be a noise. There's going to be rubble on the streets. So it's your duty as the landlady to say, why well, what's going on? And I and stop it. In fact, by doing these sort of stupid things, tenants are bringing the whole building down. Do you remember Poonam Chambers? Poonam Chambers, yeah. Why did it come down? Because yeah. some, some Faltu fellow who thought himself to be an electrician etched the bottom of the columns to conceal the electrical wires. Of course, we don't want 
that there was water leakage also. Who's responsible for that? People who own the building have to be responsible. Every landlord has a right to take the premises well, not no, not to disturb them, but once a month, once in six months, he has the right. You get it? So yes, now, yes. So now, now I can't uh, hold any amount, right? Uh, why don't you negotiate with them that look, you've done this much of damage? Yeah. It's only that I recover, or tell them you leave it in the place in the same position that you got it. Simple. You okay. had maybe if you have taken photographs or something, you had you were it was in this condition. Please leave it in the same condition when you leave, and you can take your money back. Okay, fine. What exactly have they done? Can may I know that? What exactly have they done? It, uh, they changed the tile system, tiling system. It I, is, it is, uh, yeah, it is broken. They changed the uh, machine, aqua guard machine from here to there. So they changed the tiles. So um, most of the tiles are destroyed. A kitchen color has been uh, totally de totally destroyed. Yeah, color is also destroyed. Now, now may I ask a few more questions? What is the value of the property? It's 1.5. 1.5 crores. Yeah. And how much is it going to cost you to repair the tiles? Yeah, most probably it's 50,000 rounds. Because the whole kitchen is damaged. I, if I were you, I would tell them I'm giving 25,000, you'll give 25,000 and settle the matter. Oh. Settle the matter. Otherwise, they are not going to give, leave until you give them the money and the matter will just keep on going on and on. Mm. You go to court, the court will say that no tie, change of tiling is allowed. Mm. Okay, so the tiles are broken, they will put in other tiles. It doesn't mean that tiling must be vitrium or marble or something. It means tiles means tiles. Tiles, yes. Yeah. Tiles, whether they are cheap tiles, tiles means tiles. Paint on the walls, whether it is tuna, whether it is this temple, whether it is plastic, whether whatever it is, paint on the wall. See, you have also to be reasonable with them. Yeah. If thousand rupees to, to tell you the truth, if it's worth one and a half crores, I personally would not fight for 50 rupees. I would give it, tell them that take your damn money and get out, please. Okay. But, but you get the place done up and give it to the next person at a higher rent, saying that, look, I've done all this to begin with, so maybe. What was the deposit that you had taken? 4.5. 1.5? 4.5. 4,50,000. 4,50,000. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand. You must have taken three months' rent. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. yeah I'm correct. So now, I, I mean, think of it. Instead of fighting, get them out. Give it to some 50,000 rupees you spend. Get in somebody else. They will pay you one, not one and a half lakhs. They will pay you 160 or 170 according to the new rates. And within three months, you'll recover. Okay. okay, that's better. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Okay. Let us know exactly what happens. In the, it's in, I'm interested. Okay. <laughs> sure, sure, sir. Thank you. Now, another thing, people were asking for arbitration. Who asked for arbitration? Uh, the first participant. Achha. Can an arbitration clause be invoked in the rent agreement? No, no arbitration can be invoked in any matter which would have a bearing on the world at large. So there are certain acts in which you cannot have. I know some advocates put in an arbitration clause. I don't know why they do it. And you cannot put an arbitration clause in. There is no arbitration clause in the rent. Full stop. It will not hold. If you put an arbitration clause in, the other party will say, sorry, bye-bye. It does not, uh, it's not feasible, not possible. So there cannot be an arbitration clause in such thing. I'll tell you why. If suppose you and I have a fight and we arbitrate and in arbitration, a certain award is given. People will start using that as a precedent. Now, this award was between two parties privately. Why should it be held by others to benefit them? So in, in legislation where the public at large would be affected, you cannot have arbitration. Full stop. So uh, this is a very simple rule, but that is it. Well, what else? And Mr. Malcolm, his third question was, what are the provisions under the consumer law? How can one complain? Uh, on what grounds can one complain? You can't go to the consumer court in this. For, a, for this matter. Okay. You are not a consumer. You are a tenant. Consumer means you buy a product and use it. It doesn't work well. You go to the consumer court. And please remember, consumer court is a very wrong term. It is not called a consumer court. People talk of consumer talk and they think that my father's court. Hai. I am the consumer. I own the court. How people think when you talk of... <clears throat> no, I am not joking. I am not joking. I'm not... Are, consumer court will go to the consumer court. Mein consumer court does not belong to the consumer. It is a consumer redressal court. Where you have a problem, you go to the court to redress a problem. It doesn't belong to you. 
A lot of people think if you go to consumer court, everything will be sorted. Everything will be sorted out. Everything will be in my favor. It doesn't work that way. And in fact, a lot of people we know are misusing the consumer court in a very wrong way. The consumer court says that advocates need not be present. But a lot of people who are not advocates are pretending to be advocates. And in the consumer court, the person has to appear in person. Or he may have his friend. An advocate could be a friend. I'm not denying it. An advocate could help. But people are making a business out of it. Non-advocates have made a business out of it. Because it is not compulsory to have an advocate. Non-advocates have. And they are the ones who are creating this problem. Uh -huh, consumer court mein jayega, baby. So they are the ones who are creating this problem and giving people the idea that consumer court belongs to them. If you go to a consumer court, everything will be decided in favor of the consumer. It's only a matter of filing papers. But, yes. But in 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 uh in the intact matters, consumer court is out. Full stop. Bola, what okay. else? Please, let's that finish one by one. <laughs> Normally in these sessions, people come up with their own personal problems, but we have to take a larger picture. Yes, yes. Good evening, sir. In the event of death of the original tenant, uh, is the landlord under obligation to transfer the tenancy in the name of the uh, person who is residing with the original tenant? And if he doesn't do so, what are the what can the uh, have you read, uh, agreed party do? Have you read the law? No, sir. I can't tell you the section, but it's very clearly mentioned over there. If Mr. A dies and there is somebody living with him, not necessarily being in the home at the moment a fellow dies, but somebody who is residing with him normally, like his wife, his children, maybe mm -hmm. his uncle, aunt, nephew, whatever it is. If the rent receipt is in the name of a. And somebody tells the landlord that Mr. A is dead. This is his death certificate. Please now prepare the rent receipt in my name. The landlord has to be informed within 90 days of the death of the original tenant. It is compulsory on the landlord to now prepare the rent receipt in the name of the tenant, of the person who was staying. I won't say son or daughter, whatever it is. The relative who was staying with him. That's the law. It says relative. Now, how many degrees of separation and all that have not been answered? But I would say it normally under the old Hindu laws, it was four degrees of separation. So whether it is four degrees of separation or very close relatives, they can lay a claim to the tenancy. It's, it's, it's fair because there might be a person who doesn't have children. His nephew stays with him. He has been staying with him for a long time. So it goes to the nephew or the niece or whatever it is. Usually it goes to the wife if she's alive or to the children. Now here you have to be careful. The law is not very clear on that. It says with the relatives staying with the deceased at the time of the deceased's death. Suppose there are four children. To whom do you transfer the rent receipt? You could transfer it to four. The Lord allows you to do that. But why should he? Then four will ask for uh, four will ask for uh, another fourteen people to be included. So normally they like to give it to only to one person. But who is that one person? A smart landlord will create friction between the family members. He tells one or two of them go to court and get the order. So they will go to court, and the landlord does not have to transfer their rent receipt for ten years, fifteen years, whatever it is. That is what landlords normally do. But if there is no litigation, then the landlord is bound to change the rent receipt within three months. If he does not, he has to pay a fine of 150 rupees a day just to force him to do it. Does that answer your question? It's in yes, the book. Sir. Just read the letter. I won't remember the section, but read it. It's in the book. Hmm? Thank you, sir. Bless you. And that gentleman whom we discuss this matter with, sir, make sure that the relatives don't fight. Otherwise, all of you will lose. Next. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, this is my three years, sir. Uh, I wanted to know how the law of uh, adverse possession, which is under the Limitation Act, justifies itself in terms of, you know, acquiring title over a period of time. Like, I absolutely agree with you, sir, when you said over a period of time, tenants have begun to realize that they own the house property. But how does that... Um, sync with or uh, does it not contradict with you, the law of, or you, principle of adverse possession? You know how adverse possession works? You say adverse possession. You know how it works? Who taught you about adverse possession? First of all, how did you come to know that there is such a thing as adverse possession? Tell me, how did you come to know that there is such a thing called adverse possession? She went on mute, just unmuting her. 
मेथी मैम बट या मिस माल कम थ्रू पेटिशंस जजमेंट्स मेंस यस सो आई हैव स्टडीड इट अंडर द लिमिटेशन एक्ट इज इट इज इट यू यू हैव अ प्रॉब्लम अ स्पेसिफिक प्रॉब्लम ऑफ योर पर्सनल प्रॉब्लम नो नॉट एट ऑल सर फेयर अनफ नाउ देन वी विल गो अहेड विद इट सी व्हाट इज आई डू आई एम अ सॉलिसिटर यू आर अ सॉलिसिटर यस सर कम नाउ you have passed the solicitor's exam yes sir i have passed i have not practiced um, in uh, rent law matters of course but i find these questions very interesting on you know just the principles of law why don't you ask people in your society to tell you about this <laughs> so Because, you have the best uh, to have you here yeah. don't, don't don't you need not don't need not go further on that i know okay all right sir what is that no it's a very interesting subject so we we'll talk about it what is adverse possession now remember most of the laws that we follow are tripods and somehow or the other it makes sense because there is nothing more stable than something with three legs four legs five legs it it can always be unstable but three legs if anybody knows of plane geometry <laughs> constitute a plane so remember this thing about three legs most of our laws are on three legs now adverse possession miss maitri and i are in yeah. miss maitri owns property miss maitri is lazy miss maitri does not care miss maitri has a lot of money and says why well, i have property mapu malcolm is a smart guy he occupies the property knowing fully well that miss maitri is not going to come here now how do i occupy the property i stay there i put up a board i pay the taxes while miss maitri is far away maybe in canada or california or whatever it is all of a sudden is <laughs> maybe your children realize that what well, we have got fantastic property over here so they come here by that time 20 years have passed so papa please get out of here the property is mine no oh, they say no it's ours we've got papers says please go i have been sitting here for 20 years that means your period of limitation i have been holding this property continuously for more than 20 years and the third thing is people know about it in rem if you can meet these three points you can get adverse possession shall i repeat it do you want me to, do you want me to yes sir if possible it will be great three things i have one yes sir you must be in possession somebody uh, wanting adverse possession uh, you must be in continuous possession mm. and you must be in possession for the rest of the world to know you cannot say that i was i went there once in 10 years and or it is mine you must be in continuous possession the world should know that you are in continuous possession yes sir so involved will include the owner i didn't get it so the so the owner the actual real owner should also be well aware that this person is has been in continuous possession right no if the owner comes or no to know about it he will throw the person out if matri knows that i am sitting there she will throw me out in 19 years and not make it 20 but she has come after 21 years oh yeah okay but one day suppose i have come here on the 1st of january 20 years 19 years ago and now hmm. years and she comes and tells me on the 31st of december get out i have not completed 20 years okay okay but another thing government property it is 30 years longer yes yes sir correct okay. okay so a lazy owner what you rightfully said okay <laughs> thank you so much sir Thank you. I, I had a case not now, but in eighty one or eighty eighty one, I a property, beautiful property, two acres next to Bushy Dam in Khandala. Okay. No one had been there for seventy years, and a friend of mine was granted that property. I don't know, auntie must have died, whatever it was. When we went there, the company had built a tower right in the entrance. Seventy years, nobody had got there. Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. clear now so thank you thank you thank you anyway we got the property back it cost us 600 rupees bolo what else okay mr malcolm next participant and mr malcolm hello. you had also yes sir please go ahead hello my name is rohinton good evening uh i have a tenant who uh, we filed a case in the small causes court about 40 years ago the case went on for about 10 15 years we won the case then he went in appeal then he won the case and now it has been lying in high court with some relative who is also a co-owner had filed a case in the high court and it is languishing there for now more than 10 15 years 
so we want to settle the matter we want to tell him we'll accept him as a tenant however for a 2000 square foot flat in south bombay he is offering a rent of 200 rupees which was the rent maybe 50 years ago and we believe that there's 4% increase but can i ask for 4% increase for the last 40 years what about the taxes can i recover because my taxes for his flat is more than the uh, 10 times more than the rent he is willing to pay I, I so understand. what is my recourse first of all if you are paying more taxes i am sure that making an application to the court at least the court will give you that extra amount immediately without settling the matter they will say no this much must be given second thing is after 99 i think the uh, the act came into was notified in 99 or 2000 i think 99 it was notified 2000 maybe so every month the rent would increase by 4% which on 200 rupees is negligible even today it every be- month or every year sorry to interrupt no no every, not every year once a year 4% once a okay. year okay and it is compounded interest ah, that's what i was trying to tell you in fact if you Uh-huh. I, you must have come in late uh uh-huh. you know i heard you start to, to say compound and, and i was not too clear uh-huh. it has not been mentioned and when it is not mentioned it is always considered as simple interest okay as compound okay. compounding in this in this case in a few years it would be fantastic yes yes common sense would be yes. be simple interest but if you are paying more uh-huh. what you are getting on a simple application to the high court and they will grant you immediately oh high court not small causes court because you are now in the high court ah uh, no we want to abandon that application we don't want to pursue that case in the sense that it is getting us nowhere it is just hanging fire and our lawyer tells us that it may be another 10 years by the time the uh, case is taken up so we want to settle with him and uh, we want uh, whatever rent he owes us uh, can i claim it from 99 onwards the because he says he's paying in court he's paying some uh, rent of 200 rupees in the small causes court or something he's been paying and last 2 3 years he has stopped paying even to the court now if he has stopped paying to the court go back to the small causes court and say that he has not paid evict him he has to be evict if a person does not pay rent he has to be evicted but unfortunately there are many poor people who cannot even spend 50 rupees on rent so the court no can- no he is a multi millionaire he has got uh, he has got big cars worth 20 lakhs and 40 lakhs so there is no question of him being poor yeah. uh, he is he is yeah but he doesn't want to pay if he doesn't he is not meant to pay why should he pay that's his attitude ask him whether he wants to adopt me <laughs> no he is he must be about 40 <laughs> years old only so it be difficult <laughs> anyway no but what i'm saying seriously sir that uh, uh, is there any way i can you know i from uh, 99 as you say from 99 can i add simple interest of yes. uh, 4% till the current time and can i also claim the taxes back taxes for so many years years because the taxes for the entire building i have to uh, uh, divide it by say if he owns if he's occupying one fourth of the building i have to divide it by 25% and ask him to pay please do that immediately because technically uh-huh. you cannot ask for any amount after 3 years there's a limitation oh, so in this case i won't be able to ask for from 99 onwards ask for it nobody i you can uh-huh. have- You can always ask for the moon. Nobody uh-huh. is problem asking. Uh-huh. Whether you are successful or not is a different thing. But ask. Of course, never ask uh, amounts that are exorbitant. And now the courts are coming down very heavily on that. You know, uh-huh. testimonial cases. The man earns fifty thousand rupees and the wife wants ten lakhs of rupees every month. I mean, uh, no, 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 no. We don't want to be irrational. We want to be fair with him. but unfortunately we believe is making fun of the landlord by offering a pittance you know mm-hmm. as a rent which your outgoings your outgoings he is bound to pay there is no doubt about uh-huh. that to it's an old cess building old cess building how old is it uh-huh. oh it's about 100 years old I'm, right now i'm sitting here in a building that is 115 years old ha uh-huh. there you are like that ha uh-huh. uh, right so, now over here yeah so i can legally i can only enforce that for the last 3 years is it uh, yes and i mean he but can, but can i calculate the 4% increase from 99 yes 4% increase from, but to tell you the truth on 200 rupees if you are cutting after 25 years it will become 300 
no 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 in the first year it will be say 204 in the second year it will be 204 interest on 204 so like that it will keep no oh, sir that will be compounding that will be compounding And okay the, the law does not say whether it is to be compounded or simple interest so it will be presumed ah, okay and uh, these uh, we, this is a family of owned building so the family members were staying in the building and they were also paying rent as family members they were also paying rent for the place so do i, I uh, so i am treating them as one of the families that people have died all the people have died but the servants have continued staying there and are refusing to vacate That's can it. i can i go against them in the small causes court or in the high court what should i which court. is the appropriate court small yeah. causes court they are unoccupied uh, they are uh, non authorized uh, occupants yeah yeah they are unauthorized occupants yes no original uh, original occupant was the uh, owner of the part owner of the building as well as uh, paying rent just one minute. so she was a tenant just one minute just one minute only when the this relationship is landlord and tenant ha huh. can you go to the small courts court i told you about my own case correct 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 no no what i mean is suppose there are uh, five or 10 co landlords you know everybody having a share in the building but not all the landlords are staying in the building now the building has to be maintained also so everybody who who is not staying in the building feel why should we pay rent you know to a, in a building or why should we pay to a maintenance of a building which we are not occupying so the people who are occupying are paying rent and we are issuing them rent receipt and they are periodically paying rent so although they are co owners or they own one portion of one part or one percentage of the building say one tenth of the building if they own still they are paying rent see it, when it when it becomes too complicated and when there are so many owners so many tenants uh, where, huh. where is this building in south bombay where? it is a uh, ha huh. it is around uh, bombay central bombay central now if 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 all you owners get together with the tenants do you huh. best way, i mean i'm not talking as a lawyer by you yeah i understand yes as a layman best thing is to huh. go, in, go in for redevelopment everybody will be happy and make it into a cooperative society or condominium and finish otherwise this matter will keep on going on and on but whatever you have to recover please do it immediately because the longer it takes the less you will get but when the servants are continuing to stay are do they have a right or can we throw them out you have, uh, you have to go to the court and get them thrown out quickly how long have they been staying there about one year we have filed uh, we have approached a lawyer and some cases being filed now yeah we must have filed it in the city civil court uh, no no in the small causes court under the rent act that means you are con- uh, confirming that they are your tenants no no the lady who was occupying was the tenant this was a, this is our servant lady who is staying there when you take a servant to the small causes court you are taking uh-huh. you are making him a tenant why are you doing that the small causes no we are we are saying that there is a there was a tenancy relationship between the original tenant and the landlord now the te- tenancy has expired and the person who is occupying should vacate that yes. is what uh, we are taking is this the person who is occupying a relative or a servant no no is a servant and the servant how can you take him to the court cause is court as i told you uh, yeah. I myself was taken to the city civil court saying that I am an okay. occupant, even though I am a family member. I was born here. My birth certificate. Ah, certain ah no, I understand. But the servants have been servants there for like almost fifteen, twenty years, like that, ten, twenty years. Okay, so, no, just, uh, just one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Ah, uh, three years back or so, there is a judgment by Justice Oak ah. in the Supreme Court. Uh-huh. that if you are a tenant you are an occupier if you are a manager if you are this that and the other you have no right zero right correct correct only correct comes only to the landlord correct no has any other right correct so what i would suggest is you please speak with your lawyer maybe you should not go to the because if you go to the small causes court you are actually saying they are your tenants and then they have yes. lots of rights yes 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 no the for one year they have not been paying any rent either and they are saying we, also, no we are not taken any rent we are not taken any rent we are not taken any rent we are not take and nor have they offered to pay but uh, they are staying they are saying भाई ने भाई ने बोला कि उनका सामान संभालो तो हम लोग सामान संभालने के लिए इधर रहे 
and they are refusing to vacate. And in fact, they have filed a police complaint against us. They will do. I mean, they will also go to a lawyer who will tell yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so our our lawyer advised us that uh, this was a tenancy which has expired, and this is like an illegal tenant. They are staying there uh, illegally. So we uh, there was a certain term they used uh, for some uh, uh, gratuitous tenant, gratuitous tenant or something. What a gratuitous tenant is? No, I. Mr. Mahan, really... uh, other three participants, can we move quick with this query, this particular? I would suggest that you. Sorry. Uh, don't go to the wrong court. You'll be in trouble. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Next participant. Yeah. Good evening, sir. This is Harbinder Bindra, advocate, and I'm 50 years plus. So you know that's another data point for you. Now, sir, let's get down to practicalities. Okay. What really happens on the ground? Okay. There's a dispute between tenant and owner, and it's almost becoming becoming like an assembly line today, right? So the owner goes to the police station. He files a complaint saying there's a criminal trespass. There's a, you know extortion. There's cheating. There's there is assault, whatever, and he will also put in a claim, right? Then it's the turn of the of the tenant. The tenant also goes to the police station, puts in a counter complaint, puts in a counter uh, claim, and uh, you know there all these things are happening at the police station. And the police guy says, "Hey, don't worry, we we are here. We will manage things for you. We will make sure that you know none of you get hurt and get just justice." But now it's a fight, right? It's, it's a dispute, and at the end of the day. Police raises their hand. They says, "Look, uh, it's it's a personal dispute. So you guys figure out, you know, whatever you want to do. To we are on. not in, we are not in the business of uh, you know uh, getting money. Uh, that that is not our purview." Now, sir, the point is that if we look at the current leave and license agreement, it very clearly says that uh, you know that the owner can get the tenant evicted without any recourse to law. One okay. minute, just one minute, sir. You are a lawyer. Right. The leave and license, it is not rent, it is not a tenant, it is like licensor and licensee. Yes. Correct. Correct. And and it does not come under Transfer, uh, Transfer of Property Act, it comes under the Easement Act. Okay, so that's another advantage. Now, sir, you see, my client can be the tenant or my client could be the, uh, the li licensor or the licensee. Both of them could be my clients, right? Now, if the if the licensor is my client, then I will tell the client, hey, listen, you can actually get this guy evicted without any recourse to law. So the question is, how do I do it? No, now, no, if, no. If, what do you mean by recourse to law? Are you going to hold them by the neck and throw them out? No, sir. That's exactly, that's exactly my question that the leave and license very clearly says no, the no. licensor can get it evicted without any recourse to law. I think section 41 or so, it, it, it deals with licenses. I'm very bad with remembering sections, but I think it is 41 or 42 or something like that in the Rent Act. Please look it up. You have a lot of rights as a licensor. And right. This is this is in the leave and license agreement, which is a standard format given by the government of Maharashtra. Yes. Okay, so I can't change anything in it. But so, how, so once both of them have signed this uh, agreement, the licensor should be able to get the licensee evicted. Yes. Now the other point is that if licensee is my client, then how do I make sure that he is not evicted because of this particular clause? Just, just one minute. Just one minute. I'll read it to you. <laughs> Disposal of certain applications, section 39. You read that onwards by the competent authority. So, if it's let, let us look at it this way you have a licensor and a licensee, correct? No rent, a license fee. I hope you have not written rent. Yes, it's license fee, no rent, no rent, it's license fee. Now, if the person does not leave, you have a right to go to the court. You cannot take the law into your own hands, you cannot hold him by the scruff of his collar and say, Get out. It's not possible. Otherwise, there'll be a jungle law. But sir, the leave and license agreement very clearly says without recourse to law. And the format is given by government of Maharashtra. Without? It's not given by me. No, no, please. It cannot be without recourse. Abre, sir, main aapko bata raho, I'm telling you, that is the whole beauty of it. And right. I don't... <laughs> sir, that's the beauty of it. The <laughs> agreement that says without recourse to recourse law. Recourse to law. As yeah. A, as a lawyer... You will, I mean, no agreement which says that you can cop out. That means you can cop yes. out is a valid law. Sir, my question is very simple. That look, it's a standard format. Both of the parties have signed it, uh, you know, in front of a registrar. Okay, whether it's done offline, online, but uh, you know, it's signed by, and it's the format is given by the government. We, 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 we make our own, the, see, people do not want to spend money. Hmm. If you are spending money 
a license where over the years you might be spending maybe 50, 60, 70 lakhs. Mm. People are not willing to pay me 25,000 rupees to 150, not mm. 25,000 rupees to make a proper agreement. You know what? They will go to Bombay Central where there are a lot of a uh, lot of uh, typists. Yeah. Standard, what they call a standard leave and license agreement in 50 right. Right. They feel very happy. The lawyer has not given money for it, so what do they have to do? But when the problems start, then they, then they will have to pay the lawyers lakhs of money. Oh, but sir, my question is that this leave and license agreement today is standardized. Okay, no. it is, it is, the whole thing is online. I can't do much. No, no, no. I... Boss, today, today is, this, uh, what is it? Friday today. Thursday. Thursday today. Uh, uh, last Saturday, I think 31st or something, 30th. Or, we went through a leave and license agreement, which we have been making for the last 10 years. Same client. He has been changing. People have been coming in and going out. So for, we have been doing this for, we make the leave and license agreement. If you are a lawyer and if you want, uh, if you want a, uh, so, the format of that, we'll be glad to share it with you. Sir, I'm saying today it is available online. The whole procedure is online. Don't use it because it's not a valid agreement. Why can't you make your own? No, we it's... can make our own, but I'm saying 99% is done online because it's very convenient. No, online registration is a different thing. Sir, even the register LNL agreement is online. The, agree the only if the agreement is wrong, please don't do it. Full stop. Yeah, sir. Full all that you need to put into that agreement because it's online, no? By the in the government website, all you have to put in is the names, the PAN numbers, the D1 license, uh, the license fee, the security deposit, the term, etc., etc. Security. I, I'm afraid you have not been informed correctly. Just less than a week back, we have done that leave and license with this client for the end time. We make it and it is accepted by the register. So why do you ask me that you have to compulsorily go into something that is online? But it is not compulsory. I'm saying 99% people do online. It's only very few people who say, you know, I will go for my own customized one. That's all that I'm saying. Just this morning, I read. Just this morning, I read. Everybody is doing it and it is wrong. You don't have to follow them. You do what is right. And if you are the only person who is doing it right and all the others are wrong, so much let them be. If you want to do something correctly, please don't look. And this online thing is, is a nuisance, full stop. You, you, you are a lawyer. You have to use your own brains and you have to use your own capabilities and make the proper document. And no two documents can be the same. It's full stop in that. Otherwise, you get into trouble and you, as you told me, every, every contract will then go into litigation. How can that be impossible? But sir, you government ka format hai na? Mera thodi na hai. <laughs> Don't use it. Who's asking you to use it? If you want to cut corners and use it, it's a different thing. But then you are uh, you are cutting your own feet. You got a sword over your neck all the time. There's no law which says that you you have to use that format. That it's like this. Cooperative societies. There is a step. There is a model act. Doesn't mean that you have to follow it. You might have to change it. You have to take the permission of the register and change it. So please don't tell me that you have online. There are online wheels are available and not a single will will work. Some chartered accountants have been putting up online. Uh, Sir, uh, online will me apki baat maanta is done by a private party. Ye to leave and license to government ka hai. Wo mera thodi na hai. Model bhi nahi hai wo. Wo to kehte ji ye hi hai. I'm sorry, but we are not using that format, and we have okay. been successfully not using it. So please make sure. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. What's the next one? Hello. Good evening, sir. Can you hear my voice? Yes, tell me. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, my name is Sumit Sawan. Uh, I have a small query. We have a parcel of land uh, in Lonaula over which we have some chawl constructed by our grandfathers and all those things. It is 100 years old chawl. The rent is only 4 rupees per month. There are 6 tenants. Now, few of the co-owners, they have surrendered their rights to developer and uh, now the developer is not doing anything and I am not aware whether the developer is even collecting that 4 rupees rent or not. So, in that case, uh, what are the disadvantages as an owner to me if the developer is not uh, collecting the rent? Just, just one. So it is a major four rupees. Just, just forget that four rupees or 400 is not the question. Uh, what are you? I am a landowner. You are the landowner or the chawl owner? I am the landowner. Or the chawl owner? Uh, no, landowner as well as the chawl owner also, sir. No, just one minute. In in India, the concept is different. You can be a landowner and a building owner, or you can be a landowner and not the building owner, or you can be the building owner and not the landowner. This is not England, this is India, where the law is slightly different. 
Yes. So tell me, what are you, a landowner or a chawl owner? I am a landowner, sir. I ca can I just... Uh... You are a landowner. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Now, somebody, maybe your forefathers, went, because you said four rupees rent, it might be one of your forefathers. Yes, he sir. allowed somebody to build the chawl, right? Hmm. How is it that you are collecting rent? Sir, uh, if you allow me, I will just explain it to you. Quickly. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, well, one second, sir. The land was in the name of one advocate, and he said that uh, the, this uh, chawl belongs to this ABC person. And uh, in 2007, he transferred those land rights to us, to the ABC also. So ABC became the landowner as well as the chawl owner now. Just one minute, just one minute. That means you bought the land in 2007 with your eyes open. You knew yes, that. Sir. You did not care to find out whether the chawl is being sold along with the land or not. Yes, sir. You, you see, you bought it with your eyes wide open. Now, did you get? Did you get a? Uh, before buy, buying this property, which must have been worth a couple of crores at least, did you get due diligence done on the ownership? No. Uh, no, because uh, it 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 is our ancestral land. So uh, we have ancestral rights, sir. We didn't purchase it. But you just now said you bought it. No, 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 sir. If we have not bought it, sir, I will tell you. Oh, it is in Lona. Like it is 6,000 square feet of land. And there was an advocate. And the typical agreement says that Chandra Surya Ase Parenta, uh, this chawl will belong to this uh, ABC person. Yes, now sir. that lawyer, in 2007, he said that I am selling this land to you. And he hold sold on. that land along with the parcel. Sir, please hold on. Hold on. Yes, sir. thing is going to take a lot of time. Malvika will give you the telephone number. We talk it over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If, if she can share with me, I will come down personally to meet you. That Kavan, is sir, in March 2023, you were there for Bapu Malcolm sir's will session, right? Were you uh, there? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I attended a lot of sessions. Uh, can you, if you can just share his number, I will. Yeah, use... I think that time also I shared the number, but again, I'll share the number with you. Mr. Malcolm, please, he please. had attended your session on wills. Hello. We're, we're obviously, we know each other for a long time. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, next, yes, please, sir. please ah. go ahead. Acha. Now, uh, 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 first question is whether the leave and license agreement is uh, arbitrable or not. Oh. No. No, no arbitration in leave and license, no arbitration in rent tax. Full stop. Okay. Hello? Yes. No, you can't. Even if you put it into your agreement, it cannot be. It's not a valid thing. You might do uh, it even if Hello? You... Uh, yeah, yeah. Please tell me. Yeah, your question, uh, Mr. Malcolm had already covered. So you can check out the video when once we upload no, it no, on no, YouTube. No, 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 no. no, no. That is render, render. What is the difference between rental and real license? Can you tell me? Just a minute. If you keep hold your horses for just a minute. I will yeah. in rent tax in leave and license arbitration is not allowed. Even if you put it in the agreement, it is invalid. You can no. no. What is the difference between rent and leave and license? So now we'll have to go into this in a very long discussion. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Leave it. No problem. I don't think there is a time for it. Now, yeah. if you, instead of, uh, in a leave and license agreement, if you mention rent instead of uh, license fee, it becomes a rental agreement. Is it? It's wrong. I mean, it's, uh, a, it's a matter no, of... If, if it happens, what happens is my question. It's a matter of dispute. Then the uh, license fee will say, I'm paying rent. And uh, uh, no, uh, we put rent, but actually it is a license. It will go into dispute. Uh, people, people in big agreements of leave and license, they have just mm -hmm. one word and put in lease. And there is uh, a big... There is a, I think, 2,000, 5,000 uh, feet of office at Ornament Circle where uh, it's in just one word, uh, license to rent, from license uh, to rent. And uh, uh, he has now gone under rent. Uh, 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 went there and said that, please go. They said, why should we go? We are your tenants. No, uh, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm. this agreement that I was talking about seven days ago, mm. owners are in America, they only talk in terms of rent. Everything is rent. Everything is rent. Mm. Oh. I mistake mm. the word rent and I mm. even discussed with them until the word was changed. I said, until okay. the word in your WhatsApp group, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Okay, thank you. Shalom. Next. Thank you, sir. So, Mr. Malcolm, we are done with the queries. It was a long session. I'm sorry I had asked you it will take an hour, but it went on for... Balvika? Yes? All these sessions, you will notice that people come with their personal problems. Yes. They get very agitated when we don't give them answers. <laughs> <Then they're> like, <laughs> and these 
on going on and on yeah. but uh, you know through these personal queries the other uh, fraternity members get to learn yes that is true and yes. even we learn even yeah. we like that gentleman who said about this property in lonavala and before that we also learn what things are happening and how but uh, you have to you have, you have to accept the fact that people come mainly with their personal problems very few yes 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 third questions yes oh so you have to you have to accept that you come to the seminars and you see the type of questions people ask and they get angry with you if you don't agree with them <laughs> so tell me something i remember once once some once somebody said it should be this way that should... finally out of desperation somebody said that look sir it is in the constitution then change the constitution for one man you have to change the constitution hmm. this is how people react change the constitution he says just because he did not like something yes you have to learn to accept it you have to learn to accept it chalo what else so mr malcolm we'll conclude the session fair enough thank you so much for patiently addressing the queries and i'm i apologize that it went on for so long alvika i'm glad it went on for so long great <laughs> my my evening was worth it i instead of instead of my reading some books or something this was a good discussion i'm that i'm happy for it let me put it it that. was a great learning experience not just for our participants but when we upload this on youtube so many will get a uh, benefit from this so can't thank you enough thank you so much god bless you bye